Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to graph the cosine of the angle theta. Now notice that even though in the unit circle, let me draw a little unit circle right here. In the unit circle, if we take a point x, y on the unit circle caused by some angle theta, and let's call this the angle theta right there, notice that the vertical distance right there, the y value, is equal to the sine of theta, and the x value is equal to the cosine of theta. And here we're going to graph y equals cosine of theta. You say, well, wait a minute. Why do, you, why do you use y when you should use x? And yes, we can use x, but the typical concept is that in the vertical axis, we call the vertical axis y, and the horizontal axis theta. And so in, trigon in trigonometry, the vertical axis usually is associated with y, and the horizontal axis is usually associated with theta, even though in the unit circle, it would look like the magnitude of the x value, which is associated with the cosine of theta, is indeed in the x direction. So in a way, what we could do is we could take this, and we can turn that around for uh, 90 degrees so that the vertical is associated with the magnitude of the cosine of theta. So it's just convention, so don't get confused about the x here and that we use the y over there. All right, now that we have that out of the way, again, what we've done here is uh, we've written down all the angles between 0 and 360 degrees at 30 and 15 degree intervals. So went from 0 to 30, 45, 60, 90, and then repeated that all the way through to 360. And we have the associated angle in radians as well. On top of that, we have the cosine of the angle in terms of the square roots and in terms of the decimals. And the decimals make it easier to graph. So when, cos when the angle is 0 degrees or 0 radians, the cosine of the angle is 1. So unlike the sine, which starts at 0 when the angle is 0, the cosine starts at 1 when the angle is 0. And then you realize that as the angle gets bigger, the value in the y direction becomes smaller. So for an angle of 30 degrees, the value is 0.866. For an angle of 45 degrees, is 0.707. And then for 60 degrees, is 0.5. And for pi over 2, or 90 degrees, it's zero. So the cosine of the, of the angle looks like that for the first 90 degrees. Then if we continue, you see now the values become negative. At uh, 30 degrees past pi over 2, or 120 degrees, it's negative 0.5. Then it becomes negative 0.707. Then it becomes negative 0.866. And then it becomes negative 1 at a value of theta equal to pi, which is right about there. So the cosine of theta continues on like that. And Sometimes it's a little hard to graph, but there we go. All right. Continue on past 180 degrees. Notice at 180 degrees, we're at minus 1. Uh, 210 degrees with minus 0.866. So right here, we're at 0 0.866, 0 0.707, then at 0.5, and at 0, all in the negative direction. And so, whoop, should be a little bit more like that. Looks a little bit more like that. So then the curve goes like this. And now for the last 90 degrees around the circle, at 270, we're at 0. At 300 degrees, we're at 1 half. So then we go back in a positive area, so 1 half, 0 0.707, uh, 0 0.866. And then at 2 pi, we're back to positive 1. OK, and so that's what the cosine of the angle looks like. Of course, if we continue around the circle indefinitely, uh, the, the function would just continue like this. And it would just go on like that in the negative direction, of course, it would continue on like this as well. So that's what the cosine of the angle looks like between 0 and 2 pi. And you can go ahead and try that at home. Get some graph paper or some quadrille paper and kind of lay it out. You've got to have to take your time because it's kind of hard to get the values both on the y-axis and the theta axis to line up the way they should. But anyway, that's an example of how we graph the cosine of the angle.